Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum. Today we have Neith Moore, who was a finalist last year with her lovely project, The Open Studio. Over to you, Neith. And what I did last year was to try and share our resources with the whole province and in fact the whole country. And I created my own website, which as you can see from this slide, is the Open Studio. I'm just trying to, f oh, okay, the Open Studio. And the mistake I made in last year's presentation was to try and work online and actually try and open these sites. And it takes too long while you're doing the, pres the presentation in the final to, to work online like that. So I think the secret is to try and just work through little screenshots and, and not show people what it works. Anyhow, that is the, the address of the Open Studio. And we can see some of the designers from our community that collaborated. And we've got the resources. As you can see, there's some students busy working. And I thought it would be a good idea to do the stuff that we develop and then put it on my website so that we can uh, share it with everybody else. So these are the kind of things that we do. Uh, we're a design and visual arts studio. So everything, all these projects that you see on the screen, I have now got on my website. So you can see there's a little button for jewelry design. You can look at my website anytime you like. You've got the address. And we've got connections to the education department. So you can click on that and find what our curriculum is and how we assess ourselves. So it's really nice for parents to see what the children are doing. Uh, Fiona, yes, I have stopped. OK, you've corrected your sync. Is that all right now? Okay, so to carry on, once everything was on my website, uh, I only did this last year. So it's a brand new website and I've added to it this year as well and it, it works very well. So in terms of what we need to do for this uh, teachers forum, I structured all our learning outcomes and all the little buttons on my website are actually labeled with the learning outcomes. So the learners and the parents can ac actually look at what learning outcome one is and learning outcome two or three. So here we've got a link, but I'm not even going to try and put you online. It just takes far too long. And those are the kind of buttons that you see. And when you press on them in the website, you can actually understand how our curriculum fits in with the 21st century thinking skills. So we in, in LO2, we have to uh, analyze, synthesize, and evaluate their work. In, in their history, they have to, history of design and, and visual arts, they have to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate. So all we're doing now is, is sharing that with everybody else. So the, the schools that don't know how to do it can actually look at student work. And this when I try to explain this to the uh, the delegates, we actually pressed on these buttons LO1, LO2, LO3 so that they could find out exactly how that worked. They monitor, the learners monitor their own progress. So they work from the website and then they make, they work on paper. And this was, I think, the weakness of my, my whole project. And the project that I'm presenting this year in 2012, hopefully if I get invited to present it, is how I fix this, how the, the children now can respond online. They don't have to go onto my website, which is almost a top-down presentation. They can see what I put up there, but they can't really respond to me other than using the Contact Me button. Certainly they can work at their own pace and they can work from home because they've got all the content that they need on the website, but the interaction is a, is a bit faulty. Uh, it works very well. We had very good results. So that was just a little bit of a brag. And a lot of the girls put themselves online. So that, that girl that you see on the screen, Catherine, she's got her own blog 
Love Curly Girl blog spot and she puts all her art, music, poetry on her blog. So I think that the children almost got there before I did. So this year now we've got the studio blog which hopefully people will be able to, to see. This is just more brag stuff about the students, how well they did and, and how they used the resources online. I've had a lot of feedback from other schools using these resources. So for example, if, if another school wants to know what a mood board is, they can look at this child's work, Jessica Matter's work, and, and find out what a mood board looks like. So it explains a lot of, of these, these rather peculiar terms that you can't really find in a dictionary. In terms of the evidence of the learning, one thing that I did manage to get online of the learners is that they, they've, they photograph their work. So we see some screenshots now of their work which they then put online. So anybody can click on, on that and, and have a look. And in a way it's, it's what they require in tertiary education because they, their portfolios at university and at the Technicons are all online. So this was, was a way of, of the children getting their work online. They also designed a website. Some of the children did a website design, so that could be uh, that can be viewed on the on our website. There's a link to that. They did very well in the Woolworths competition last year, so we we've entered again this year. And I'll show if I, if I get into the finals, hopefully, I'll again I'll show the evidence of how the children are w are working directly with this sort of thing, how they're working directly online. And what I find with, with working online now is that it, it actually replicates the working environment because we, don't, we didn't at that stage have that many computers. So we needed the children to work in groups. So one person would be on the computer, one would be the photographer, one would be writing the words. And they have to really manage a design group or a visual arts group as if they were in the work situation when there's an art director and uh, people take minutes of the meeting. So we can, you can see them busy working on a project now sitting outside on the veranda, all very friendly. They also have to do a lot of research. So of course with the website I can look up acceptable sites and put the links to the, the sites on the on the website so there's not this drifting around on a computer which is, is quite dangerous. So I think their research needs to be directed. Yes, thanks Fiona for putting that um, website address up. That, as I say, was the mistake I made in my presentation was trying to browse through a what is basically a huge website in, in 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes to present it and it's actually impossible. So I think just a tip is to keep it on the screen. If you, if you want to browse through whatever you've done that's online, then I think it has to wait until the Q&A at the end of, of the session because there is no time in 10 minutes to wait for a website to download and to follow links. It's, it just doesn't work. Uh, this is, I was just talking about the independent learning programs uh, where they actually build their own knowledge from the website and the server. Fortunately, they're allowed to choose their own people to research. So although I can make suggestions, they can certainly follow up as they like. So here we see a, a theme on gender issues. And in that theme, if they press on that button, if they click on that button, I've put one of my favorite artists. So I own work by this artist, Leslie Magwood Fraser, and they can research her and there's a link to her website and they can chat to her, they can telephone her if they want to. And uh, I think they find that quite interesting in, in, to, to actually speak to a real live artist, not see everything in a book. We use a lot of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary learning. And I've just put a few examples here. And of course, 
if we didn't have this website, I wouldn't be able to touch on those. So, for example, if they're doing jewelry in brass and they want to etch, they can actually interact with science teachers and find out how one can use acid baths. So that's a chemistry jewelry design project. Uh, they can liaise with math teachers online or, or download patterns on grids, which and, and there's a certain formula, I don't know what it is, where you can work out your formula for square stitching in beads. And then of course the business plan is something they have to research online as well. So as you can see this this um this project was very much research based with, with guided research. This year I hope it's much more interactive. And of course the last one here is the life orientation, how they have to learn how to do a SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunity and threat analysis on their own designs as if they were in the workplace. So it's, it puts them into a real world situation. We also work closely with, with galleries. The website of the gallery is kept up to date so we can just click on and have a look at um, this website for example. If, we, if they're not able to get to the actual gallery. Most of the galleries have these wonderful websites. So pe the, the learners can actually go online and see these, these websites because I've put the links on there. And I've also got a data projector. So if I want them to see a certain exhibition, I can go onto this website, click onto this link, and there they have the, the exhibition in their studio. So I think maybe they're quite spoiled that they don't get out much. Everything's brought to them. Here, for example, I've put those two designers. So these are real life designers and all their work, they've worked with us as a collaboration and I have they people are able to print this as a PDF. So it's almost like an ebook. So I've 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 published this ebook. But again, as I say, there's not much interaction from the children. I think this was the big failure of, of my project was it was very um, very much like spoon feeding. I was providing the links. I was setting up these collaborations and, and the children were following but not initiating any of it. Then um, how this applies in beyond the classroom, a lot of the children have set up their own well, set up their own businesses last year. So those lovely little brooches that you can see are available in shops locally. So they learnt that and were able to, to work, take those skills into the, the workplace. And as I say, this child also blogs. So people can actually see these things she manufactures on her blog and order from her. And that I think is, is the way that um, commerce is going in future. People see these things on the web and, and they want to buy this. So this kid's putting herself through university, selling things through her blog. So I feel as though that actually went somewhere. Another fantastic thing that, um, that you can put on a website if you get around to making one is that uh, there are just so many beautiful, beautiful online magazines. And this one, for example, the Beading Gems Journal, is free. Some of them you do have to pay for. But um, quite frankly, to pay $11 for a year's subscription to a magazine and the kids can just read this magazine and they can't steal it. I can't tell you how nice this is. They can read the magazine, but they can't steal it. So all these magazines are on the website. Uh, there on the screen you can see some of the links. I put link to wire work, link to so these are all jewelry design things. I've got other things on there. I've just picked on jewelry design as an example. Um, there the children are busy doing what I call guided internet surfing, so they can't just quickly post messages on Facebook. So they've got a specific site which they have to research. They're busy working on a wireless tablet, so they can they're actually writing on that screen through the data projector. Oh, I see Fiona wants me to mention that bead picture. Oh, there it is. There's the contact picture. That's the one I use on my blog and on my, my posts. So that's a beautiful portrait of me done by one of my senior students in beads, believe it or not. So those are black and white beads. So she graphed this. That's what I was saying about the maths. She graphed it and then she sat and counted and threaded these things. 
and luckily she gave it to me, so I was very pleased about that. So very good likeness, but I don't have a picture of me to prove that. There's some of the other things that um, we do that are ICT. Uh, the kids Bluetooth from their cell phones, so they take photos, they Bluetooth them, and then they can work with them. We've got a Nikon DSLR, so they know how to use that and upload um, photos. And obviously, in design, we would work with Photoshop, um, which is very expensive, but it's a design industry standard, so it's something we have to have to buy. But you know, there are lots of really free image editing software packages. There's GIMP or GIMP, I never know how it's pronounced. There's Avery Image Editor, and all of those are free. So photo manipulation is, is, is very possible on any, on any computer, even if you don't uh, have Photoshop. Uh, all the girls keep their work on the server. So they have a personal folder on the Art General Drive and their names on it. I see Jana saying, I'm clever working with Photoshop, but that's what I'm trained in. So that's <laughs> just as clever as you working with computers. Yeah, so I'm a graphic designer, so that's, uh, you know, and that's kind of what I do. And then, the, of course, they um, use Facebook and Twitter, and I see somebody's just signed in for a live chat. Let me get rid of her. And because of what we do in the studios, it's the only place in which the learners are allowed to use their cell phones. But that's quite a heavy, um, heavy responsibility. But the kids are very cooperative. They know they the pilot project, and they know that if they mess up and misbehave with cell phones, then that's toast. They won't be able to use them anywhere. So they, they're using them very, responsible, very, responsive, very responsibly. Okay, so why was this website innovative? I think probably in the context of the United States or the UK, it's it's not that innovative because I know they're, they're wonderful sites. The universities have, the art schools have sites, and but I just think that um, it's the only studio I know in South Africa that's that's got its own site, and I really um, did put a lot of work into it. I must confess, though, that I was taking a six-month course through UNISA on web design, and so I used this website as my exam, and I got a, a B for it. No, sorry, I got an A for it. So, yeah, so I was trying to kill two birds with one stone. And, um, and, and I think in conclusion that um, Eric Erickson's idea of of wanting to put back into the community and generate something for the community is what I'm doing now because I'm in my 60s and I just feel that this is something that I need to put back. So I'm having a great, a great time doing it. Thank you very much. And yes, I see there's a question from Fiona with UNISA. Uh, it's a six-month course. It's through. It's very um, RT intensive so you but you end up being able to read HTML and know what cascading style sheets are and I just found it I found it invaluable I uh, highly recommend it uh, my school paid for it in the end once I passed it they reimbursed me so they are very very proactive in uh, teacher development they they put their money where their mouth is and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if anybody is interested, you can just uh, have a look on the UNISA website and find the uh, web design course, and you'd, you'll really enjoy it. Thanks, everybody. Is there any questions? That was Neith Moore from Durban Girls High School. Thank you, Neith, for that brilliant presentation. Wow. Good day, everyone. <laughs>